Hello and welcome to the GovHack International Connections event for 2024. Uh, we've had many uh, regional connections physical events across the country already, but tonight we have our, intern, uh, our international live stream for all of us who might like to attend connections virtually, um, or if you just didn't get a chance to get to a physical event. Tonight we'll run through a few different topics to get you started with GovHack in 2024. Uh, we'll start off with what is GovHack, we'll go into what is open data, um, open government data, We'll go through how to GovHack, and then we'll talk about the themes for this year's competition. I'd like to uh, welcome you to ask questions through the Q&A feature on the side at any time. Um, I'll happily answer those as we go along, or we might get to those at the end as well. So to introduce myself, uh, my name is Chris Feller, and I'm the Regional Operations Lead for GovHack this year. As an active participant over the last five years, I've recently come on board to help organize the competition. Um, I don't want to introduce just me without also recognizing the team behind GovHack. So we have an amazing group of volunteers across Australia and New Zealand who have dedicated their time over the last few months to make the competition possible. We have the international operations team who you can find out more about using the QR code or URL on screen. But we also have our GovHack board and many amazing regional volunteers, facilitators and mentors. A massive thank you goes to all involved. I'd also really like to recognize our many sponsors and partners who are vital to the continued operation of GovHack. We believe in keeping this event free and open to all to participate, and our sponsors are one of the many ways we can make this happen. We have many returning and several new sponsors for this year. Our international lead sponsor for this year is Infosys. Infosys have been supporters of GovHack for many years, and have provided valuable partnership throughout this time. If you are attending the Melbourne CBD event this year, you'll also have the pleasure of utilizing the Infosys Living Lab, which is a really awesome space. A big thank you to Infosys. Our national sponsors this year are the Australian Taxation Office, Department of Home Affairs, Australian Public Service Commission, Department of Employment and Workplace Relations, Geoscience Australia, the Australian Treasury, and Rosetta Analytics. Our national partner is the Australian Computer Society, ACS. Regionally, our ACT silver sponsors are the ACT Government and Agile Digital. Our ACT event and venue partners are AWS and the Canberra Innovation Network. Over in Northern Territory, we have our gold sponsor is the Northern Territory Government, specifically the Department of Corporate and Digital Development. Our silver sponsor is Jackadder International. And our event and venue partners are the Darwin Innovation Hub and Charles Darwin University. Over in Queensland, our Queensland gold sponsor is Unity Water. Our silver sponsors are the City of Moreton Bay and Sunshine Coast Council. And our event and venue partner is UniSC. Down in South Australia, our silver sponsor for this year is Inspiring Australia South and Inspiring South Australia. Our event and venue partners are the Kaplan Business School and Torrens University. In Victoria, our platinum sponsor for this year is the Victoria State Government, specifically the Department of Government Services. Our event and venue partners are the Melbourne Business School, Centralon, and Deakin University. And finally, in Western Australia, our event and venue partner is Great Southern Grammar in Albany. So, well, so once again, welcome and let's jump straight in. So what is GovHack? I think it's important probably to start with what GovHack is not. So GovHack is not about hacking the government. Um, it's probably one of the most common questions I get and probably kind of a natural response to the name. But no, GovHack isn't for nefarious hackers or APTs. Uh, similarly, we're not a security convention like DEF CON. GovHack is a not-for-profit with a mission to use open government data to make our communities a better place. The term hack in our world is best defined by the Oxford Dictionary definition that you can see, which is a quick or in inelegant solution to a particular problem. GovHack is about hacking together a solution over the competition weekend to help solve one or multiple challenges. Our values are important to us and the competition. As you can see, we aim to be inclusive, free, hackers first, regional, volunteer driven, transparent, 
open access, and fair. I think with all of these values are uh, something that everyone can understand and identify GovHack with. One that I'll call out personally is regional, which is to say the competition is accessible to anyone, whether you're in a major city, town, or just an individual from home. Until very recently, I personally lived in Mackay, Central Queensland. And as I mentioned, I participated in the competition over the last five years. And for me, living in a regional area, we did not have access to many events and competitions. So GovHack was a unique opportunity for me to connect with a network of people outside of my area and challenge myself on a scale not usually available to me. This is my personal example, but it speaks to our uh, regional value. So then what is GovHack? GovHack is a festival of, I of ideas. Some may refer to it as a hackathon, and while that's somewhat accurate, GovHack is about more than just creating technical solutions to problems. We welcome diverse ideas, thoughts, people, and groups to come with the best solutions, to come up with the best solutions for these challenges. And many times that means something completely non-technical. For our competition, solutions use open government data to make our communities a better place. GovHack is taking the many, many open government data sets and using them in new and engaging ways. We want teams to combine and display this data to achieve something fresh and innovative. You'd be surprised at how uh, an innovative thinking and different approach and different perspectives can take the same set of data and create something that's completely new and something that we've never seen before. This happens essentially every year at GovHack all across Australia and New Zealand. So who do we reach? Uh, we connect you with a passionate community across Australia and New Zealand, from regional centres all the way to major cities. Last year in 2023, we hosted 672 as total participants, which I think is a great turnout. We're working towards achieving and exceeding our pre-pandemic participation and hope to once again connect more than 1,000 participants in the competition in the coming years. We have over 6,000 members in our Slack community. Um, at present, and, and Slack is the tool that we'll use to communicate, you'll stay informed on the weekend, connect with mentors and other participants, and even to find a team member or team members. Good when things work. So what are the benefits of GovHack? So in GovHack, you can build your digital and entrepreneurial skills and experience. You can increase awareness of public data sets. You can showcase how data-driven approaches can address current challenges, grow networks between students, employees, industry, and government, and connect aspiring students with future career opportunities. I'll, speaking from my own personal experience, I've found it's an excellent way to connect with a diverse range of people all across the country um, and to, to make connections that you, you wouldn't do in your normal life. So who participates in GovHack? So GovHack's open to everybody. It, it can be anybody. Um, we've had participants who are as, at least as young as four, but we, we have um, school students, tertiary students, all the way up to uh, people who are 80 plus, people in middle career, all, all types of people join GovHack. It's not just for major cities. As I, as I mentioned with my own anecdote, um, we have participants all across Australia and New Zealand, all the way from the major cities to regional centres. Um, and we have individuals who participate uh, at, without necessarily going to a physical event at all. And I was one of those previously as well. GovHack itself is actually quite large. Um, Pre-pandemic, we, we had over a, a thousand participants in our annual competition. Um, and even in the more recent years, such as last year, we had 600 plus participants. So it's, it's quite significant. It's one of the, the largest hackathon events you, you can attend in Australia. And GovHack connects participants with industry and government. So as you saw, we have quite a few uh, government sponsors and we are using government data and they're also providing the, the challenges a lot of the time. So this is a really get, great way for our participants and students, schools, and universities to connect with each other um, and to connect with government as well as industry and just passionate individuals as well. So let's jump in the, into the 2024 competition. 
So our competition this year is from Friday the 6th to Sunday the 8th of September. So this is next week. Uh, we're very, very close now, only a week away. This time next week, hopefully you'll be either participating digitally or at a physical event, um, networking with people um, and jumped on the Slack and Slack and, and trying to talk to people and find some teams. We have four major competition themes for this year. So these are artificial intelligence and governance, where we explore the integration of AI and government sectors, balancing innovation with ethical concerns and security. We have digital transformation and enhancing citizen experience, which is a focus on how digitalization can improve the efficiency and accessibility of government services. We have climate change and sustainable public policy, which is what is the government's role in the environment environmental stewardship and sustainable practices. And lastly, we have cybersecurity and data governance. Tackle the challenges of protecting citizen data and developing robust cybersecurity strategies in the face of increasing cyber threats. So the challenge design is about ideation, exploration and collaboration. We spark the ideas and then try and improve skills, try new approaches and perspectives to challenges and human-centered design to craft challenges. So it, it's hard to provide specific guidance on how you approach, uh, approach these challenges because each one will be different and your approach to that is sometimes your unique proposition. But it is really about trying to work through these different stages of ideation and exploring the, the different themes and the challenges, trying to come up with the best idea that you can from, from your own perspective and your group's perspective, um, and then really presenting a new approach that we haven't seen before. So you, you might find that you've, uh, there's, there's already existing solutions to some of these challenges. That's not necessarily what we're after. It's, you, you could rehash the same sort of thing. That's that's not going to get particularly far in this case. It's it's more about approaching it from a different angle, something that might be unique to you and your experience. So over the weekend, we have quite a number of mentors. So they will be around um, in physical events as well as online. Um, best way to reach those in, in most cases will be the Slack. They're there to provide guidance and support to teams in relation to the challenges and, and in general. The mentoring, as I said, can be in person or online. And if you are actually interested in becoming a mentor, if you have experience in these sorts of areas, uh, please feel free to uh, fill out an expression of interest. We're always looking for more mentors. And you'll find the mentors have a, a, a wide range of skills across many different areas. We will have uh, mentors from sponsors. So these can be uh, public servants, government uh, employees, and things like that, all the way through to uh, people in the professional services, in IT, in development. Um, and then, as I've sort of mentioned before, it doesn't have to be a technical solution. We have people who are general professionals in their area, people who have experience in the competition, students who have participated previously and, and done well as well. Um, so we have a really wide range of mentors. So I really encourage you to try and engage with them as much as you can um, and use that as a learning experience and a way to, to really augment your project. So the data. So GovHack is very much about utilizing open government data. There's quite a lot of data sources available, um, freely available to everybody right now. Um, you've probably, unless you've participated in something like GovHack before, you may never have, have had a chance to go through and look at these. But there's a significant amount of data being provided by federal, state, and local government um, and government agencies that's freely available across a lot of different data portals, which I'll show you shortly. Um, and these are the data sources that we use within, within GovHack. That is one of the fundamental pieces of your GovHack competition. Um, and you'll find that GovHack itself has uh, encouraged the use of all these different open data portals and data sets as part of the competition, um, because that's what we're really trying to utilize in this case.
You can also use other data sources. Um, so we encourage you to use the ones that we've published. There are as too many data sources for us to be able to to keep up with and, and publish in, as part of our data sets. So you, you can also use other open data. Um, preference obviously goes to government data where possible and to data that is relevant to the particular challenges and competition. Um, but there is a huge amount of data available that is um, freely available open uh, online. It's openly licensed. It's published in accessible and open format, so you can interpret it and, and process it how you like. Um, it's it's often in standardized formats, so to, it may be accessible accessible via API or exportable via like a CSV, um, which makes it readable, machine readable in this case. And yes, it's it's free and freely accessible when and wherever it's possible. So I'll get to one of the demos a bit later, but um, you'll find um, as part of the hacker space, we do have a particular area for the data portals. You'll find most state governments um, have their own data portal available that you can get to right now outside of the competition. We have quite a lot of federal government data sources as well. Um, I've taken a few screenshots of several of the different data portals. They are very accessible and easy to access, and we'll run through that shortly. But first, we'll go through the hackerspace. So the hackerspace is essentially the core of GovHack um, online system. Uh, it's where you'll find all of your data, your profile. It's where you'll see the competition um, challenges. You'll submit your particular um, solutions as well. Uh, and, and we'll jump to that shortly. At the moment, uh, the 2024 hackerspace is, uh, is a cut down version because we obviously haven't released the challenges yet. So, but you are able to get to previous years hacker spaces at any time. Um, Twenty twenty three. I've got the URL on the on the screen at the moment. You can jump into that now just to see what hacker space looks like, just to get yourself familiar with how it will look on on this weekend as well. This next weekend. So this is just a bit of. So we've got. I've got some screenshots from previous years here, just to give a bit of an idea. Um, you'll notice at the moment this is the landing page for the hacker space where we have the GovHack handbook, you'll have the competition rules, a link to get access to the Slack. Then there's the challenges themselves, where you'll, you'll get to see the challenges once they're released, um, and the projects. So people, you'll be able to see other people's projects as they're working along on it, um, as well as your own. And then within the challenges themselves, you can go into there and see the challenges by their region. Um, noting that you are able to uh, enter into most challenges in, in different regions unless it has a specific restriction. Um, so please take a look at all the different uh, challenges and challenge areas, um, not just ones localized to yourself. And then just as a bit of an example, this is a previous year, so don't don't think we're releasing the challenges just yet. Um, You'll, you, you can go through and see what the challenges will look like. So in this case, we had a, a set of Victorian challenges, um, just to give you a bit of an idea of what the, the format will look like there. Um, so the, the challenge itself is laid out on this particular screen. You'll read what the um, description and exp explanation are. You can see here as well that it shows you how many teams have entered the challenge. And then if you were to go into the challenge itself, um, you'll get additional information about things like recommended data sets, a greater explanation of what the challenge is looking for, uh, and you can look at um, a whole bunch of different details there. And this is a bit of an idea of a, a team project if you were to submit one. So this is a, a cut down version, um, but this is what your page will look like once you form a challenge uh, where it shows the, the challenge title, or your, your submission pr team project title, I should say, shows the team members within there, You'll have a project description. So you, this is where you explain what your particular challenge and solution uh, are. Um, you've got things like your data story as well, which is to explain how you've used the data sources in your particular submission. Uh, and then at the bottom, you'll see things like the video, which is a link to your submitted video once you've got that. Um, there's also other options there around linking to your homepage your um, external evidence of work, so things like a GitHub if you've if you've published in there. Um, and below that, you'll be able to see the team data sets as well. So those are the, the data sets that you've registered that your um, 
challenge includes. And there, yeah, you can also see the different challenge entries in that sort of case as well. So moving on to your personal profile. So at the moment, you can get in right now, jump into the active hacker space and see your profile. I recommend you do if you're um, entering the competition. It's good to jump in at the moment and update all your personal details, get that ready so that when you're starting to form teams, it's as um, detailed as you'd like it to be so that you can help justify your presence in a team, I, I would imagine. Um, going through specifically in this, this demo, you can see the different events that you've registered to join. So if you've registered to join a physical event and you want to uh, look at that specifically, look at the details of that event, you can find that in your Hackerspace profile. Um, and you can also see where uh, you've got your teams and projects on this particular page as well. As as we've got here. So just a bit of an example of your projects when you're trying to manage those over the weekend. You can also favorite other projects. So it's always good to take a look at other people's projects and, and how they're working. Um, sometimes it's just a, a matter of inspiration just to see how people are approaching different challenges. Uh, it's not to try and copy anybody's work there, but we are open about the, the submissions as we go along. We try and work together to try and produce the best result in, in these projects. So have a look at other people's projects um, as you go along and previous years as well. This is the projects page. So once we get into the, the core of the weekend, projects will start to appear in, in the team projects area where you'll be able to go through and scroll through all these different team projects and have a look at how people are addressing their particular solution. And then we've got the resources as well. So on the as, as we mentioned, we've got links to uh, a number of data portals and data sets that are available. Um, you can use these to find and get access to the the open data that we've published or made or made accessible through uh, through that particular link. But you can also get to these things obviously directly and find your own sources as well. Uh, we have some guidance around the the technology and the um, the rules as well as getting to the Slack. And then we've got the government the GovHack handbook. So. The GovHack Handbook is essentially your core um, reference for trying to find out any specific details. If you have any questions about the competition or how that you how you approach anything, um, things like submitting your projects, changing your profile, and things like that, please take a look at the handbook initially because most of these things are probably already addressed, um, and we have quite a range of instructions on how to do these things. So, as a minimum for the entry. These are essentially what we, we would say are the core elements here. Um, so I would uh, always check the, the handbook at the time as some of these things can, can update and change. Um, so at the moment, you will definitely need, as part of your team, every team needs to be registered in the hacker space. So if you're participating in GovHack, you will need to be registered. Um, as part of your submission, you need a descriptive project page that is part of what's being judged. You need a team captain nominated. So this is just somebody who manages the members within that role. Um, but it's important to have that person there because they can also, uh, they're the one who puts in the submission. So if you're uploading your video and, and adding a link, that's that's typically up to the team captain in that case. So you need someone who's going to be there and responsive and able to do these things. Um, the challenges, you need to join the challenges uh, which we'll get into a little bit, but each one that you want to participate in, you'll have to join that. And we recommend trying to join those um, earlier on the Saturday as much as possible. Uh, it also gives you, a, you can see who else has joined those challenges to give you a bit of an idea of how many people are, are competing in a particular challenge, um, which is not to discourage you from that. It's just more so that you can see who else is working in that space and, and maybe talk to them as well. Um, you do need to note down and nominate the data sources that you've used. So things like the data sets, you'll copy those in and it's it's quite evident where to put those. Um, you've got an evidence repository, repository URL. So if you're building a technical solution, so say you've actually developed a, an app sort of solution, this is something like a GitHub URL typically to provide some of the evidence of the work that you've actually created. Um, you don't have to have a technical solution and may, and may not have an evidence repository URL. But it's always good to have um, a bit of evidence of even if it's how you've conditioned your data sources, um, even if that was to export something as a CSV, 
or an Excel spreadsheet and then combine that. It's good to provide that, that evidence wherever possible. Um, so uploading to something like GitHub is, is a great way to, to demonstrate that. Then you have your video URL, um, which is a big part of the submission and a demo URL as well. So that's what I referred to previously as the homepage. So again, if you've got a, a live app or a live website in that sort of case, it's it's great to have a, a, a URL that we can that we can look at and that judges can look at to to kind of assess what you've submitted and and how um, how that's been built. So Hackerspace is really yeah is is the home of GovHack for everything that you will do within this particular competition weekend. So this is what it looks like at the moment. Um, you'll notice at the moment that you can't see things like the um, the challenges themselves or the, the projects. They will become available on 7 p.m. on Friday the 6th. Uh, as the competition opens up, you'll, you'll notice those appear and you'll be able to access those. You can't access the competition before that. Um, you can fill out your profile, but until the competition itself actually opens, those won't be shown. It's a bit of a flow of just how you're represented within the hackerspace system itself. Um, not going to go into this too much, but um, yeah, you as a user account can join a team. Your team is part creates a project which is linked to a challenge, and then the data set is added to the projects there. So teams can consist of up to ten individuals. Um, and you can choose challenges from a, a range of different regions uh, as long as the rules don't specify that uh, specific conditions that you don't meet. Um, you as an individual can join more than one team um, and you can enter more than one project. I typically tend to recommend trying to stay focused on, on a, a quality single submission rather than trying to go wide and, and shallow, um, but you are welcome to, to join more than one. So running through just the registration side of things. So if you haven't already, I'd recommend you go through and register on Hackerspace. Um, you can sign up as a, with just a username and password, or we have the social login with Google. Um, just noting it always says sign up with Google, even if you're just going to log in again. Uh, but you can use your Google account to log in there. When going through, you'll need to accept uh, terms of conditions. You should go through and read these as you're going um, through the registration. Uh, we need to know who you are just to be able to identify you, um, especially if you're in a, a physical event space. Uh, and you can indicate your willingness to be to contacted and um, just giving us some basic information about where you might have heard about GovHack. And then just some basic information for our um, diversity inclusion statistics and just to identify who is attending these events just so that we can continue to outreach where where possible so challenge submission wise so you obviously want to find out probably mostly about submitting your challenges um, so you'll have mentors who will be able to guide you through this process on on the on the weekend um, it is reasonably straightforward this is just a bit of an example that we've got of a uh, submission itself um, so you'll go through once the challenge opens and you'll be able to create projects. You can name these projects. Um, it's good to name it and name your team so that you're not just generic team one and project one. I try and come up with a, a good name that helps identify you and, and helps the judges be able to um, refer to you. It's, it's, it's much harder to refer to team zero one as the, the winners than it is to refer to something that's a, a name that's relevant um, and keep it appropriate, obviously, as well. So when you're submitting a challenge, I'll just go through it. You've got the description of your, your particular team. It's got the members within your team, as well as um, the information about the submission and, and project as well. And as you're submitting your challenge, you also have the, so you've got the, the challenge entries there. So it will list out the, the challenges that you've essentially joined. Um, so these are the ones that um, you've indicated that you're participating in. There is a limit there, so you um, you only want to join the challenges that are relevant to your submission. Um, but you are welcome to more than, to join more than one challenge for a single project, and I encourage you to. You'll find sometimes, or quite a lot of the time, that your 
solution has overlap into different challenge areas. Um, and you might design a solution that works well for more than one challenge. So it's a good idea to find and go through all the different challenges that are available. Um, rather than targeting maybe just one individual, um, you might find that you've got a, a broader solution than, than just one challenge. And I should mention also that the, the team data sets is the other area where you'll you'll be able to add which data sets you use. And that's that's important for us to understand where you're getting your data from. Um, and also to help our sponsors understand, and especially the open government data portals themselves, which which data is useful and how that works for them. And then you've got the challenge itself. Um, which yeah, that's that's just part of the same submission there. So Competition data. So we've already talked about um, quite a lot of different data sets there, and you'll you'll find that as you go along, it's it's pretty intuitive. Um, there's quite a, a lot of different lists for data sets for the competition, uh, and they get listed out based on the recommended data sets provided by the challenge submissions submitters. Um, but your best bet is to go through and find the data sets in the Open Data Government portals um, that are going to be suitable for you. So moving on, the big one to get involved, um, I recommend obviously joining the hackerspace and then also joining our Slack. So the Slack's active right now, um, so you can join that. It's just very easy and accessible to get into. There's a whole number of channels in there, so I, I recommend going through. Uh, by default, you'll you'll probably only have a few channels that you're initially joined to. I recommend going into the find more channels or add more channels area and going through and adding the, the channels that you think might be useful to you. Um, otherwise, you might not see a lot of the conversations that are going on in that space um, unless you've joined those channels specifically. So I recommend specifically an announcements. Obviously, that's where we as GovHack will be posting um, news and announcements and things that you need to know throughout the weekend. So keep an eye on that one. Um, I also recommend joining Slack on your mobile as well if you want to keep up to date. There is the Find Team channel, which is a great one to join now to start um, putting up a post about yourself, trying to find other team members that you might want to work with. Um, I don't. I recommend not restricting yourself, even if you're at a physical event, just to your local area. Sometimes it's great to work with um, people who are fully online and digital. Um, keep keep everyone included. Don't just stick to your um, even a pre-built group of people. It's really good to network with other people and find those those diverse teams. And we find a lot of the time that it's best to address these challenges with a range of different people from different backgrounds um, to give you a, a solution that ends up being something different and unique. You've also got your hack and then state location. So in this case, Hack Vic as an example, uh, where you can have conversations that are specific to your state and, and location. Um, and then there's the mentors channel, channel as well, which is a great area if you want to ask questions of different mentors. We will have um, both physical and digital mentors active throughout the whole weekend. So if you don't have a physical one or if you want different skill sets, please feel free to post on the mentors channel um, and you'll, you'll probably find that one of the mentors will get to you pretty quickly. Obviously, put in the effort to try and find out any information first where possible um, by things like the handbook, but mentors are there to help you and to provide uh, different understandings of different different areas. You'll find a lot of the mentors have many years of experience within GovHack, so they're a great resource to to tie into. So I recommend jumping on right now um, to govhack.org slash Slack, joining the Slack and starting to get familiar with the platform before the weekend, um, and introduce yourself, find teams, and and look at the existing resources as well. So you can see that on our website. If you if you jump onto the GovHack website itself. Um, you've got things like the frequently asked questions, the handbook, um, as well as the Slack. There's links over there to register. So as I sort of mentioned with the team formation, I really recommend um, getting started right now as much as possible. Um, on Slack, you can start forming teams locally if you know people as well, but I really recommend yep, jumping onto the Slack. You can get started with your hackerspace profile as well. So it's good to fill that out so that people know your skill sets and know what your background is. And if you're a, a returning GovHack participant, you'll also have things like your badges from previous years if you've won um, or if you've participated in different events uh, as to give a bit of an idea to other people who you are and what your experiences might be. 
I really recommend to get your friends and colleagues involved. Um, gut packs are really about getting people along initially just so that they can can work on these challenges. Uh, it's very much an event that's built by by you and your networks. So if you can, if you've got people who might be on the fence who are interested um, or who, who just simply don't know about gut hack, please just invite them along um, and, and get them into the GovHack weekend. If you have the chance, I definitely recommend going to a physical event. Um, I know, again, having been remote for many years, the physical events are a really good way to engage. Uh, it is slightly more difficult to, to network and engage when you're on the digital side of things. So if you have the chance, even if you're a bit shy, uh, please, please try and go to a physical event if possible, um, just to get that, that experience as well. Um, but also, don't forget people in the digital of who are participating digitally. Uh, just because they're not in your local region doesn't mean that they're not going to be a great team resource potentially. So stay involved on the Slack, but stay involved physically if you can as well. So the competition weekend. So first thing I'll recommend is that if you're attending a physical venue, um, you you should check the hacker space for your specific opening and closing times, as they kind of they vary per location. Um, some uh, event venues will not be opening on the Friday night at all. Others will open earlier. Some might open a bit later. Just check with your particular registered location. But on the Friday night, um, and all times are, are localized, so this is local to your particular time zone. On the Friday night, most events will uh, open their physical space at so 5.30ish, um, and, and some of those will have their presentations begin at 6.00. The main important part is that for everybody at 7 p.m. On, on their local time is when the welcome video will start, the competitions will begin, and the challenges will be announced. So that's when you'll be able to go through and jump in, see the challenges that have been released, uh, join teams, and, and the ball will start rolling. On the Saturday night, um, in physical locations, a lot will have mentor morning teas. Uh, on the Slack, you can obviously message your mentors at any time, uh, but there, there might be some presentations at the physical locations. And midday is when we start to recommend that you that you locked in your challenges. So it's really good to get on those early um, just to make sure that you've, you've set your goal. You can join challenges up until essentially the last minute, uh, but it is really good to try and lock those in. And it gives you and other participants an idea of who's working on which challenges, because some might like to join challenges that aren't being addressed by others. And then 7 p.m. AEST, uh, we've got the Gup Hack Trivia Night as well, which is a great uh, little event. So if you've got the opportunity to join that one, uh, and we'll post more about that on Slack, uh, please please come along to that one. And then finally, on the Sunday night, we have uh, at midday is when we really recommend that you've, well, you should definitely should have started your video creation by that point. Remember, videos, vi uh, video is a big part of your submission. Um, we it's it's one of those things that takes longer than you think um, and is the core of your submission essentially or one of the main cores of your submission so i definitely recommend if you haven't started by midday on the sunday to really get that rolling at 3 p.m we recommend you start uploading your videos or or already be in the process of uploading it just remember that if you're at a physical location if 10 different teams are trying to upload all at the same time. You've got the, the potential consequence of, of bandwidth slowdowns. Um, and if you haven't started by about 3 p.m., uh, it'll be hard to, for somebody to be able to help you address any sort of issues that you might run into with uploading. So make sure you try and get that happening early. At 4 p.m. is the project submission deadline. So that's when the competition will close in your localized time zone. At that point, there will be no more submissions if you do have a, a major technical issue or something does go wrong, you can contact us. But by by general rule, but 4 p.m. that's when the competition and the system itself will just automatically close. So really make sure you've got that all finalized and locked in, ideally well in advance. And by 4 10 p.m. Uh, we'll have the closing ceremony. So we'll have a video for everybody as well as in physical locations. They uh, may also have a um, closing statements as well as some presentations if if you're going to one that has one of those. So that concludes our presentation for tonight. I'm hoping that's been valuable for everybody. Um, if you 
are online at the moment in the, the live stream, uh, feel free to ask any questions through the Q&A feature. Um, I'll remain on for the next few minutes while we have any questions. Thank you for joining and I look forward to seeing you on the weekend.